I'm Carol Robinson, I'm Dr Lee's Professor of Physical Chemistry here in Oxford and also the Founding Director of the Kavli Institute. My name is Janet Langdon and I was born at the beginning of the war in 1940 and I was lucky enough to come to Oxford to read chemistry in 1958. The Kavli Institute, where we're sitting today, was endowed by the Kavli Foundation and I proposed an idea which would be to bring together all the different sciences in one building. I called it the Kavli Institute for Nanoscience Discovery so that when you walk in in the morning it spells kind. I don't think I ever thought I was going to be a scientist. I was very interested in the natural world, which is often people's way into science. So when I was young, I lived in London and then we moved. My father moved us all to Romney Marsh. And then I thought, there's such science and chemistry here. I started organizing things into sets and I became very interested in nature. And my science teacher said, you're actually really good at this. You know, you need to do the O-levels, you need to get some qualifications. And then I went to work for Pfizer, which was a wonderful experience. They recognised something in me and said, go to college, we'll support you. It was amazing. And then seven years of part-time study, and then eventually to Cambridge. Who would have thought you could leave school at 16 and, and be a complete imposter at Cambridge? <laughs> but I loved it. And later I became the first woman professor at, at both Cambridge and Oxford. That's a, a slightly surreal event because you think, well, I've got to be really good or they'll never have another one. So I remember feeling quite daunted by the fact that I was the first full female professor in chemistry. To be awarded the Rosalind Franklin Prize was a fantastic honour. I've always admired her. I'd always read about her in books and then I started to research a lot more about her life. I, managed to find her notebooks in Churchill, went to read those, and she describes her experiments beautifully. So isn't it wonderful that I get to meet Rosalind Franklin's second cousin who's now supported my research. So yes, there's a really a very nice full circle story there. I'm truly delighted that she funded my chair, <laughs> not only because I think it's a great thing that a woman has been so successful in the investment that she's now able to do this, but also, makes me relax. I don't have to be thinking about where the next money is going to be coming in to fund my chair. It gives me freedom to get on with my research so I'm so grateful. And also there's a friendship aspect that I like to think that we've cultivated over the years. I come for dinner, I email Janet from time to time when there's exciting things going on in the world and, and you always have an interesting answer. Rosalind really had a terrible time, which probably only her family knew. I mean, it was awful being um, a woman in science then. She knew me from the moment I was born, and I think she gave me one or two um, chemistry lessons. And she was a fantastic person, and as we all know, died far too young. But she was really a pioneer and everyone who came after her has benefited, I think, from what she went through. I also think there's something about a personal connection. I'd heard about Janet's story as one of the very early uh, women students in chemistry and I really wanted to meet her because I thought she must have some tales to tell about what it was like to study chemistry back in the 50s and 60s. It was, been fascinating for me to hear from her. Things were very different then. It was only five years after food rationing had started and the food we were given at St Hilda's was horrendous. My first year, um, which was 1958, all the men um, doing chemistry had done national service so we were, they were two years older than us. It was all very different and there were still the remainders of war. I think uh, the support of, of Janet has been transformational for me and I really appreciate being supported by another woman. I think that's such a nice story. I really am um, incredibly grateful. I think for me now it's about supporting younger women coming up 
behind me and making sure they get the same opportunities. I am delighted to see that we have so much more equality, diversity and inclusion than we've ever had before. It just improves everything. We have so much more lively discussion because people come with all different viewpoints. This is what we want, so I'm delighted to see this. Science is a so much richer place now than it ever was before. And I think chemistry maybe was a bit slow at picking up on that, but now we're much better. Philanthropy is so important because if you're always wondering where is your next money coming from, you can't be focusing on your research and, and looking after your group. I think it really takes away that sort of anxiety about trying to fund things. So I'm in incredibly grateful for philanthropy. I think it definitely yes. feels like we're in a partnership and we'd like that to continue, wouldn't we? For me, I really value the individual donor because you have a chance to get to know them, to speak with them regularly. I like to think that any success I have done is also happy for me and that's a really nice thing in a relationship.